Good evening, YouTubers. Welcome back in to another edition of Astros Recap. It is, of course, Sunday night, 11.05 p.m., July 11th, 2021, as the Astros finish up first half of the season, 91 games, and we start the All-Star break tomorrow, basically. Um, so, obviously, the Astros played, you know, Oakland for three, and then New York for uh, for three. I uh, went three and three in these six games. Obviously, I'd like to go four and two and win your series, uh, but wasn't necessarily the case. The Astros did beat uh, Oakland two of three, and then lost two of three to New York, the Yankees. That is so. Um, I'm actually coming to you feeling okay. Uh, obviously, the Astros won today just to salvage a game, and it was huge. Uh, improbable. They were down five runs. Uh, in the ninth inning, so not really feeling like you had a chance, and uh, I give the offense and and everybody that produced in in the order in that 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 ninth inning a major credit to uh, continue to put up good at bats and get the win. Obviously, out two of the big hero three run shot. We will talk about that game obviously, but I do want to go in order. So off day Monday for the Astros. First off day, you had their 20 games in 20 days. Uh, with an off day, a rain out basically on a Friday back in Detroit, and then you had the doubleheader on Saturday, a seven inning doubleheader. <clears throat> so you had an off day there, but first scheduled off day on Monday, so I'm sure the team you know enjoyed that or getting it. And then, so yeah, you had a six game home stand. I want to look at this real quick because, yeah, six game because they swept Cleveland. So last Sunday was a nice podcast to have after getting swept by Baltimore. Uh, that actually reminds me. So uh, when I did my mid-season report, which was after Wednesday, Wednesday the 30th, right after I got off, I, I realized I actually left out two people in the rotation. I believe it was Framber Valdez and Jake Odorizzi. I had two, two people I did not talk about. And I was supposed to bring this up last week, so I'm way behind. Uh, but it's the All-Star break, so I guess, you know, if, I've, if I were to do another mid-season report, uh, this would be the time to do it. But I'm just going to talk about two players, obviously. Jake Odorizzi, a guy I, I have a lot of faith in. Um, obviously, he didn't get off to a great start. Started a little bit late. Came in, you know, halfway through April. So, was sort of late. You know, got signed. I don't know, he was just late to the party, I guess. Uh, didn't start off in the rotation. So when he finally got his first start, not very good. Second start, not very good. Third start gets hurt, obviously. Was out for a while. Coming back, feels like he's starting to get into a rhythm into, into the zone. I think Oda Rizzi is going to be a very good, solid uh, starting pitcher for us for the majority of the year. In fact, I expect him to be uh, very solid. Uh, for me, like what I've known of Odorizzi in the past, obviously, I remember him more so from his Tampa Bay Rays days than his Minnesota Twins days. And the Twins are the most recent, but Odorizzi, I think, will be a very solid middle of the rotation type arm, like a three. And his ERA has gone down. I mean, he, you know, he's up over 10 after his three starts, but every start since, it's, he's been pretty solid, so. Um, that's a guy I, I was ha you know they actually signed him after Fromber got hurt for a start of spring training and Fromber initially was going to be out for almost the whole year was the first initial report or so I heard so Oda Rizzi was sort of going to be like a replacement for Fromber Fromber's back in the rotation Fromber had been great We'll talk about his two starts this week, which weren't spectacular, so he fell off a little bit. But Fromber basically picked up right where he left off uh, last last year in the postseason. So I don't think I talked to Fromber. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Uh, I know I didn't talk to Jake Odorizzi. I mean, so I was talking about starters to begin with, and I jumped to the bullpen, and then I talked about the uh, position players after that. But, yeah. I think Fr yeah. Anyway, Frommer's been great. We'll we'll talk about him here in a minute because he started first game. I'll talk about here, but um, uh, those two guys. I'm trying to remember if I forgot anybody else because I talked, I talked to my colors.
I remember going back, if you remember correctly, I, I went back to the very first series of the year, and I did things based on, so I, yeah, I talked Granky, I talked Javier, we talked McCullers, I talked Garcia, I want to say, I talked, it's so weird to go back and think about your, your first four starters, or Keedy, I think we talked about, yeah, yeah, so I, yeah. Not in any particular order there, but uh, I needed to talk Fromber and Odorizzi there. So, Fromber, happy with? I mean, he's the ace of the staff. He's not the quote-unquote guy. I mean, Granky would be your ace when you just look at, you know, body of work. But based on performance last year and early or halfway through this year, uh, Fromber's the guy. And Odorizzi, I think, will be a very solid piece of the rotation second half of the year. So, I'll just leave that there at that. Uh, but, yeah, shifting to the games here. So the Astros didn't – this was a Fromber start on Tuesday. Wasn't very good. After two – he gave up three runs in the first, three in the second. So it was, it was very early six runs. Uh, Alvarez was really the big story of the game. He had a big two-run shot. Uh, well, the two-run home run of the first wasn't big, but getting them on the board after giving up three, which was nice to get. Um but we were down six to two, and then you know, was it a grand slam he hit? Might have been. But he had a big swing that tied it. Well, we took the lead. We added on. So you know, not a great start, but the offense came through. The offense, you know, getting Alvarez back after he was on paternity leave in this game was big. So, uh, but yeah, I'm trying to look here at his. I need to find the summary here. Scoring plays. So yeah, he had the two run home run there. Scoring plays. Give me just the stupid scoring plays. Come on. All right. So Stroll had an RBI single to make it six to three. This is on the bottom half of the fourth, and then Alvarez hit the big three-run shot to tie it. And then yeah, Altuve had a two-run single, and then I believe it was a, I guess an RBI ground up by Gurriel for their nine runs. But Fromber's line not very good. He did get through five innings, uh, got the no decision, ten hits, six runs, five earned runs, walked. Two struck out six. ERA rose to 2.86. Brian Abreu, first game back from the DL. IL, I should say. Not a huge fan of Brian Abreu. We've been over this. Uh, but he did get two scoreless innings in, so he looked good here at least. Uh, we will talk about him here in a little bit because he uh, he's not good. He's not a good reliever. Just that simple. Um, Stanek got the hold there. And then Presley obviously gets the save. His 15th of the year, so... I feel like Presley's saves have gone up a little bit. He's been getting more opportunities of late. Um, but, yeah, good win. Oakland, you gain another game. Same thing on uh, Wednesday. As they fought, they fell, fell behind in basically every game, but they were able to come, come away with wins. Obviously, the big home run here, I have to think about this. Uh, Altuve had a big three-run shot. Uh, we did cough up the lead there as uh, that was um, Javier's doing, I guess. Two earned runs to tie it at three, but Tucker hit a home run off Shambhania, 4-3, and then Stanek and Presley, 8-9. That's the combination that you have to roll with as of now. But um, Stanek's been sort of shaky, was very good early on. I feel like he's still the guy you're going to use, and I would agree with that as an eighth inning guy. 11th hold of the year, and Presley gets his 16th save. So, winning that, Wednesday's game, not a good game. Felt good going into it, obviously, winning the first two, but Frankie Montas, who's not, you know, a world beater, uh, he's had good games against the Astros in the past. Obviously, they beat him up pretty good in game four of the postseason, if I remember correctly, last year. And his ERA this year was close to five, but he shut them down. Uh, and, you know, we we pitched well enough to win. I think we lost what we lose. Two to one. So, I mean, and McCullers, tough luck loss, I believe, yeah. 
But McKellar's after giving up two in the first was pretty solid the rest of the way through. But yeah, we can only muster one run. That was Chaz McCormick double in the eighth. Uh, or the seventh, I should say. That was it. So we lost that two to one. And yeah, Andre Scrub got a scoreless inning. So did Joe Smith. So Joe Smith has been back. Joe Smith's actually looked good in his outings since returning from the IL. Um, but still working the ERA down at 5.89. So we'll see that. And Scrub, obviously, ERA over 5. He's back up with the team right now. Uh, but McKellar's went 7 innings, 7 hits, 2 earned runs, struck out 8, walked 2. Uh, other than that first inning, that was the that was the inning, and then we just couldn't we couldn't muster anything offensively. So <clears throat> Friday, this is where the offense sort of went cold. So you score one run against Oakland, and then you get shut out in back-to-back -back games in New York, four nothing on Friday, one nothing on Saturday. The story in Saturday's game was obviously Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole, uh, complete game, threw 129 pitches, something like that. Uh, but, yeah, he shut down the Astros, really never had a chance, uh, which is, you know, Granky. We'll first talk about Friday, where just the Oda Rizzi start. Oda Rizzi wasn't great. I don't think he was terrible, though, either. He gave up two runs, as this doesn't want to load. Let's see. Yeah, he went six, gave up two earned runs, wasn't terrible. Struck out four, didn't walk anybody. 3.61, that was a tough luck loss. Yeah, but the offense, for some weird reason, is Abreu. Abreu came in this game, gave up two more runs. So Abreu's just, he's hes not good, let's be honest. Um, yeah, Brian Abreu, he's, he's not. hes hes He sucks, let's be honest here. Hey, B B like actually came in and pitched two and two-thirds to actually save the bullpen. He actually was solid. He, no, no runs. I mean, he gave it three hits. He struck out two, but no runs came across. So Abreu gets one out, gives up two earned runs. And Belak comes in, goes two and two-thirds, gives up no runs. So we know what Belak's been this year. And Abreu's worse than that. So, oh, you know, we talk about – I'm not going to get into this. I'm not going to do it. Um, but yeah, shut out back-to-back -back games. One run on Thursday. Things not looking good. Uh, today's game here. As Saturday, Granky went three. Came out because he had a sore, sore. He was sore somewhere. Uh, nothing big to I think worry about. Is more precautionary. Well-rested bullpen. So Javier came in three scoreless innings. Stanley Presley. But they lost this game one to nothing. So, yeah, just couldn't muster anything offensively. Had three hits. I mean, Garrett Cole was, yeah, he threw 100. Let's see here. 100, yeah, 129 pitches. And they were, Yankees were scared out of their mind to go to their bullpen. Rightfully so after what we saw happen today. But, yeah, Garrett Cole is not going to come out of this game. 12 strikeouts, 2 walks, 3 hits, all 9 innings, complete game, 2.68 ERA, so his first good game since he hadn't been able to use the sticky spider tack, whatever it was. Today's game is the one I actually want to dive into a little bit here, so obviously, obviously you've lost the series, but you want to be able to salvage a game, going to the All-Star break feeling somewhat okay about yourself, and things did not get off to a great start. Yankees scored an early run as a misplay by Robel Garcia. And golly, Robel Garcia and Abraham Toro on the left side of the infield is just a disaster defensively and offensively. They can't do either even slightly well. They're, they're just both not professional baseball players. It's just that simple. They need, they'll get Correa back. They should get him back after the All-Star break. Like, he's on the Corona health and safety protocol list, so they've been out with him. Uh, been, Yeah, they've been without him for a few days. He'll be back fine. Bregman should be back shortly after the All-Star break as well. I was thinking more so the end of July, but he might just miss the weekend series. If all goes well and he progresses the way he has, he can be back when they come back home to play Cleveland, which would be like the 19th or something. So... Brightman might be closer than you know I initially thought, which we need him back because I can't stand Abraham Toro. Um, yeah, it's bad there. 
Uh, but Robel Garcia was running a second. It was ground ball. He did, tried to backhand it, but hit off his glove, went to the outfield. I mean, you got to make the play. At the very least, you got to knock the ball down. Didn't do either. And that scored the first run. Now, Maldonado, who's been just an atrocity at the plate. Uh, Martin Maldonado hits a home run to tie it here. But Martin Maldonado, guy I've actually been very fond of uh, as an Astro. I've, I've, I've liked the guy. I wasn't a big Chirinos fan. Uh, Chirinos got, I, I mean, he, 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 would, he just, yeah. He wasn't a great hitter. He wasn't. He struck out a lot. I, I just, every time I think of Chirinos, I think of that high fastball that he always would try to swing and he'd always miss it by a mile and could never make the adjustment. That's what I think of when I think of Chirinos. But Chirinos is a good guy, nice guy. But at the end of the day, I mean, I, I look at your skill as a baseball player, and, and I, that's how I make an assessment on you. And Chirinos overall wasn't a great hitter. Uh, it's hard to find good hitting catchers. But Maldonado here, like, don't, like, just give me a 200 average. He's hitting like 150. It's ridiculous. I mean, the thing with Maldonado, the years we've had him, at least, you know, he'll hit 200, which isn't great, but he'll pop you, you know, 10 to 15, 20 home runs, and I'll take that. Just, he had a home run today, so I don't want to, you know, bash on him too hard, but there's just absolutely nothing with Martin Maldonado. I'd actually like to see Jason Castro get, get some more starts because I think he's a better hitter. And, you know, you, the whole argument, if you want to make a counterpoint, is, well, Maldonado works well with their pitchers, blah, 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 blah. I get that, okay? Don't tell me that Castro doesn't work well with our pitchers. Don't, don't, don't tell me Castro. Yeah, I mean, I, I just would like to see Castro start more than he has because I think he provides more offensively with the power he's got, and I think he can put the ball in play more, more than uh, Martin Maldonado. And I think he cares a little bit more. I feel like... Maldonado sometimes goes up there and just doesn't even really care about his at bat. But he hit a home run. So that tied it momentarily. Uh, that was basically it. And the Yankees scored two more. Tucker did hit a big home run. Well, it wasn't really big. It was a long home run, but made it 3-2. to two. They really opened it up, though, with Gary Sanchez's home run uh, to push the lead to 7-2. to two. So you go into the ninth inning down 7-2. to two. Uh, at this point in time, I'm sort of wrapping things up for uh, the Yankees here to sweep us, which obviously this series is way more important for the Yankees than it is for the Astros because the Yankees are basically playing uh, with the trade deadline, you know, half a month away, a little more than half a month away, but the Yankees are playing to put themselves in a spot where they can buy uh, at the trade deadline here, so you know they're hanging on. They're 40, they're 46 and 42 going into this game here. Uh, but we get to the ninth inning here, and um, this is after you know Abreu can't Abreu again gave up runs. You can't use Abreu. You, you just you can't use him in a close game. It's just that simple. He gave up another run. He's not good. Let's be honest. Blake Taylor came in. He sucked, too. He gave up three earned runs. Blake Taylor's a waste of time. They had to, they had to go to Ralph Garza, who actually got five outs, didn't allow runs. I'd like to see more people like Ralph Garza. And you know, people that you know aren't the guys that get significant outs. The guys that you use to try to get significant outs can't do it. Andre Scrub, I'm okay with. He's been a little bit better since his IL stand or coming back from AAA, whatever it was. Joe Smith was pretty good. Uh, you know, you can use those guys, but when it comes to, like, Brian Abreu, just uh, Blake Taylor, Brooks Raley. Raley's on the IL, but when he comes back, I don't want to see these guys pitch in high-leverage situations because they prove they can't get it done. I'd rather see Ralph Garza. I mean, give me a guy that, you know, is a no-name that at least hasn't, prove to you that he's that he fails at a certain spot. I mean, just... So, yeah, I mean, it goes back to Dusty Baker. Dusty Baker needs to make these decisions, but, I mean, don't give me Blake Taylor, Brooks Raley, and Brian Abreu when they prove to you time and time and time again they can't do it. Give me a Ralph Garza, Peter Solomon, a, a, you know. Give me somebody that hasn't proven they've failed, basically. 
And if they fail, so be it. At least you tried something different instead of the garbage you throw out there with, you know, you have Brian Abreu and Blake Taylor and Brooks Raley. Thankfully, Anoli Paredes is back in AAA where he belongs, probably for the rest of the year. Um, but I'd bring up Solomon. I mean, shoot, send, send, send Brian Abreu back to AAA. He's got some things to work on. I mean... Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see people that at least haven't failed yet in high leverage situations. And, you know, maybe you'll catch lightning a bottle, maybe they stink, but at least give them a chance. But the story of this game <laughs> was the big comeback, obviously. Ninth inning, uh, the front Yankees have, let's see here, Domingo Herman who usually is a starter for him. But Jamison Tyon went six. It was pretty solid. Three runs, or three hits, two earned runs. But Herman worked a, the seventh, and he worked the eighth. Came in for the ninth. They were going to use him to get the final three outs there. Uh, did not get off to a good start. He got pulled pretty early as Guriel had a little chopper, the infield single. Uh, it was a little chopper down the third base line that just sort of died. So he didn't really have a play. So he was on there to start. Tucker came in after that, hit a uh, double off the left field wall. I think that was it for Herman. They pulled him right there. And then you had Chaz McCormick come up who hit a, yeah, I think uh, Chad Green came in right there and gave up the double to McCormick. Scored two runs to make it 7-4. to four. Uh, McCormick was in at second base there. Then I think you pinch hit here for um, uh, Robel Garcia. Yeah, you had Jason Castro uh, pinch hitting there for Garcia, which, yeah, I mean, that's, that's fine with me. Uh, you're going to pinch hit with either, you know, uh, uh, Garcia and Toro back-to-back -to -back in the order. I mean, they, they, those are outs waiting to happen, basically. Uh, usually by strikeout, too. But yeah, Castro comes in, gets a big hit. Castro he gets those pinch hit opportunities late in games when the game's tight, and he's actually come through. Look, he has. He's been a clutch hitter in big moments, I feel like, this year. So, But had a bloop single, runners at first and third. Then Abraham Toro, miracle, hits a long, deep fly ball, hits off the uh, you know judge leaps at the Astros' bullpen, not able to get it, bounces off the wall. Scores um, McCormick from third to make it seven to five. <sighs> I need to make sure I, I need to make sure I'm getting this right here. Yeah, it scores McCormick. Yeah, it, it scores McCormick from third. <sighs> okay, I gotta think about this because this is gonna bother me if I. Had it going right here for a while. Let's see. All right. Let me let me let me get let me get to this again here. Cause I'm getting confused. This isn't usually something that happens, but I'm getting confused here. So let me think here for a second. Scroll all the way down to the ninth, ninth inning here. All right. So yeah, Guriel single, infield single, Tucker double. We got that. Pitching change to Chad Green. McCormick doubled, scored two runs. Toro doubled. Okay, so so here's why I slipped up. So after the McCormick double, it was Toro before Castro. So Toro doubled off the right field of uh, the Astros bullpen, off the fence there. Uh, McCormick scores there. Then it was Castro. Castro had the single. And Toro did not score. They, didn't, they you know, it was a blooper. I had to get over the infield. It did. Toro sort of had to hold. Uh, got to third. No chance in risking it. Seven to five at this point. Uh, but here comes Martin Maldonado. It actually lines out to the shortstop. Labor Torres has an interesting um, decision here because he could have let the ball drop uh, because it wasn't like a line shot where if you, it was sort of a soft liner, but it was dropping. He caught it. Then he tried to drop it to get the out at second because they actually pinch ran at first base 
Uh, after Castro got the hit, they brought in Stroll to pitch run and had the day off. But if he had let it drop, he probably turns a double play. Uh, he didn't do it. Um, he tried to drop it, but at that point it was too late. The umpire already called a, Mo 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 a Maldonado out. So now you got to rush at the corners, one out. Altuve comes up big, comes up clutch. Hits a ball. I mean, a ball that was basically on the ground, and he golfed it out of there in the left field to uh, get the walk-off hit. Uh, they t torched your icing on the cake after getting the win. I didn't even, wasn't even thinking about it. It's sort of a revenge moment, but ripping the jersey off at the end to show the Yankees up a little bit was kind of cool. Um, because, you know, Judge hit a home run Saturday, and he's sort of, you know, coming around third, put his jersey together to, like, mimic, you know, Altuve, basically. Maldonado hit a home run today and sort of pulled his shirt down like this to be like, you know. Uh, so there's a little back and forth there, just sort of a fun thing. But getting the win was huge. Um, so you're going to the All-Star break at 55 and 36. 19 games over. So I'll take that, uh, definitely take that there. Um, obviously, yeah, it's just a big win all around. I mean... To be down five runs going into the ninth and to score six, you know, uh, it's always a tough, tough thing to do. Uh, to you know, I mean, we hadn't hit worth anything for three, three and a half games basically, and to come up and score six runs in that ninth inning there, uh, especially you know, it being the Yankees going into the All Star break, a lot of reasons that this was more than just any average game. I felt like. There was some meaning to this, so getting the win there was big for the Astros, and uh, very proud of the way they came together in the ninth inning and the way they passed the baton, kept the line moving. Uh, I mean, they only, yeah, I mean, it was great. So very, very proud, and I will sit here and congratulate the Astros on a job well done uh, from a hitting standpoint today. So want to say that. Bullpen still, same issues. Nothing's changed there. Starters, uh, Fromber's been a very sh you shaky today. Obviously allowed six runs in his previous start, so he might need a small break here. Um, you know, so we're going, I mean, we're going to the All-Star break, and we'll reset the rotation on Friday. Uh, I believe McCullers will get the uh, start here, and then we'll go from there. Granke, of course, uh, I think the whole taking him out soreness was precautionary. He'll have extra time to rest, obviously. And hopefully our starters can basically do what they were doing the second half. Uh, you know, I go into the season, I said 88 to 92 wins. I look at things now, I think they should be better than that, to be honest with you, with a 19 game. Uh, being 19 games over 500. Uh, the A's are three and a half back, so you know, Leeds decent. Would like it to be a little bit better, obviously. Um, but I did the math earlier today. If the Astros go 47 and 24, that would put them right at 102 wins, which would be nice to have another 100 win season. Um, so yeah, that's asking a lot. You know, if the, it's maybe a, being a bit too greedy. If the Astros, you know, win 92, 95 games, I can't really be upset there. Um, if they're around 30-ish games over 500, I really can't be too upset. But, I mean, this team surprised me in the past. After what happened in 17, I didn't expect them to win more than 101 games, you know, in 18, and they won 103. 19, they won 107. So... Obviously, the disappointment last year until the playoffs. But, I mean, this team, their offense is good. If they just get that one or two relievers, I think at the deadline, getting one would be enough. Because I think if you can get Baez back, I think he can help. I'm not going to expect much of anything from Josh James. Uh, but I do expect things from Austin Pruitt. I think that you can make this work if you get one reliever and hope if you can get the other guys back that they can also help you out. So, uh, Presley's your closer. The 
Astros don't have the assets to go out and get a big name guy like a Craig Kimbrell. Uh, but uh, Ryan, is a Ryan Tapera on the um, Cubs could be a good fit. Uh, I don't know if his first name is right, but I, I think I think it's Ryan Tapera. So um, they'll be sellers. They look like they're gonna be sellers because yeah, they're gonna blow things. I don't know how big they'll blow things up, but they're gonna sell the deadline. So that's a team you look at and. Yeah, I won't get into a whole bunch of trade talk tonight because I'm coming up on 30 minutes. But, yeah. Um, trying to think here, obviously. Injury-wise, you'll have Rikidi back at some point. But we'll get to this all-star break. Um, no Astros. So, obviously, first two to opt out. Correa and Altuve opted out. Uh, Correa's wife's pride and Altuve is dealing with some injury and Thoughts and prayers, actually, to the Altuve family tonight. Apparently, after the game, Altuve couldn't even do a post-game press conference because apparently his father was in the hospital, and he had to rush out right after the game. So, hopefully, I don't have an update there. Hopefully, things are good there. Um, and then Presley and Brantley opted out. Brantley dealing with some issues injury-wise. Um... Presley's wife, I guess, is also pregnant. She's doing a day now, so I don't. It's not a good look to have all your guys opt out of the All Star game. I just don't. I don't like the look there. It just doesn't look good. Um, you know, I was okay with Altuve and Correa not going, but now that you had four guys make it and none of them will be there, I mean, it's Mike Fire fraud type uh, type stuff right there. Uh, Mike Fires, who's scared to throw or a pitch against the Astros. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not a big deal for me, really. I mean, the All-Star game is not a huge, huge... I mean, I used to really care about the All-Star game, not so much anymore. So, uh, that's that's that. Um, but yeah, I'll wrap things up there. I'm not, you know... Obviously, I'll talk to you next Sunday. When I do so, it'll only be three games, so it should be a quick podcast. I'll try to get into things that I possibly missed. Uh, but, yeah, we'll wrap things up there. Obviously, a big win. Astros, really proud of the way they fought back today. Um, uh, it was, yeah, important as a game could be, I feel like, uh, in July. Anyway, I'll wrap things up there. We'll talk to you next week.